and get straight into it. So the, the structure of today's session is going to be, um, I'll be hosting um, uh, the session and I'm going to be sharing the story of the book by introducing people who have contributed at very, various parts of the journey. Um, and I'm going to ask you to feel free to contribute any thoughts that you want to share in the chat function. And our hope is, because we do want to hear your voices, we want to hear your thoughts. Our hope is that we will get to, uh, we'll, we'll use 45 minutes for the formal part of the, 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 the um, call, and then we'll have 15 minutes at the end to just hear from anybody else who wants to make a contribution or say something. And um, I am going to ask as a starting point for everybody to just go to the chat function and just share um, a response to one question, and that is, why did you decide to join today? So just in the chat function, just so that we can get a sense as to why you showed up, and then that will help everybody else to speak into that. Um, so a few thoughts. Why did you decide to show up today? And anybody who doesn't want to, so Kuba says this is history making. Tithio Garen said he was told to see you so you so beautifully compliant. <laughs> uh, um, Santi said it's a big day for Symphonia, and uh, wonderful. Thank you so much for everybody who we will be um, capturing these thoughts and 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 looking at it afterwards. So I really appreciate your willingness to contribute. Um, so this session is going to be the first of many sessions. We will be having um, more sessions where we will have a chance to engage specifically about um, the various aspects of painting that, we, that we're trying to showcase in the book. Um, we will be talking about specifically PFP as a nation building process. Uh, we're going to be having some people tell the stories around uh, PFP as a leadership development process. Um, how it is a process that mobilizes active citizenship, uh, how we're reducing inequality in education, and also that PFP is a, an, an opportunity for citizens to make a contribution to a more just and equitable society. So that's the, the kind of long, longer term view today. Uh, we want to acknowledge those who were part of making this beautiful book happen. Um, I want to specifically mention Professor O'Connell as a starting point, and then if, if Professor, if you want to say something, we'd love to just briefly hear your voice. So Professor O'Connell provided invaluable support to us as an organization from the first moment we had this dream, uh, when he was the um, uh, Vice Chancellor of, the U of UWC, he, he helped us to get the program accredited by UWC, He's been our patron since then. He's really exemplified for me. One of the things that I want to acknowledge about Professor O'Connell is, is he, that he has exemplified eldership. So Angelus Arian taught me around the role of elders. And, and what Professor O'Connell's been doing is he's been blessing the next generation of leaders. And I have often felt so blessed by him. So... Um, yeah, so that's my first acknowledgement. In the book, we have a beautiful foreword from Professor O'Connell. And Professor, I don't know whether you wanted to just briefly say hello to everybody. Doesn't sound like it. So just a, a, a huge acknowledgement for, for Professor O'Connell and the fact that he has been able, he's, he's decided to join us today. So, the next person I want to introduce is Professor um, Brian, uh, John Bolmink. So uh, we have two books um, about Pardons for Possibility, and, and he should take responsibility for the fact that these books happened, because many years ago, I think it was in about 2013, he challenged me. I was telling him about what we were doing, and Professor um, uh, John then challenged me, said, it's not good enough to just do the work. You have to create the artifacts. So this led to the first PFP book in 2014 and also contributed to our commitment to writing this book. 
So for those of you who don't know Professor um, Golmink, he is a national treasure. He's an educational thought leader, an elder, a mentor to many. He's the chairman of Umalusi, he's the chairman of the DG Murray Trust, he's a friend of PFB, and he wrote on the cover of the new book, he wrote an endorsement, and I'm going to read it. He says, this book is a beautiful collection and celebration of many different voices which share a common experience, partners for possibility. It is precisely this com commonality that provides the inspiration, the power, and the authenticity behind the stories. This book will help all of us to rediscover our courage to feel differently and act meaningfully as we impact our own spheres of influence, while at the same time deepening our respect of a leadership movement, PFP, that is so desperately needed in these troublesome and bewildering times. So Professor, um, Professor Volmink, I have two questions for you. And um, I'm going to invite everybody, one of the, one of the ways that, that Zoom makes it easy for us is to ask you to use speaker view, because that will enable you to see who's speaking with this large group of people. It just makes it slightly easier. So speak view if you want to uh, see Professor, um, Professor Volmink when he speaks. But my two questions to Professor Volmink is, firstly, uh, why did you feel we needed to create artifacts like this book? And secondly, uh, you've been a very influential supporter of PFP since 2011. Uh, why do you support the idea of Partners for Possibility? And I'm hoping well, Professor Volmer. Thank you, Louise, and hello to everyone. All the colleagues, some familiar faces. Uh, I'm happy to see one of my previous bosses here, Brian Figaci, and, and others. So uh, I want to say that I, was living in Durban when Louise uh, presented the PFP model at a conference, international conference in Durban. And I was very taken by that. In fact, I was uncharacteristically found myself on my feet giving a, a, a standing ovation uh, because I really felt it spoke to me, uh, these elements in the, uh, in the model was exactly what I thought should be in an educational intervention. And I know there was another part that I like, and that is that she made the point that in a country like ours, we can be mesmerized by the problems, and we all are aware that there are many problems, or we can see possibility in all of that. And we can only do that through partnership. And so the idea of partnership for possibility is not only focused on school, but is actually focused on society. And I, and I felt, uh, I had another conversation with her a year later, and I felt that this has to be, uh, this has to be made an artifact, the story of PFP, because many people have good ideas, but when they're not there, the ideas disappear uh, because it has not been documented. And the other, the other reason is evidence. We need evidence uh, to, and we need to hear the voices of people uh, so that uh, we can see that this is something that works. So thank you, Louise, for inspiring me. Uh, in the country, we all need hope uh, and we all need inspiration. And I want to say thank you to you and your team uh, for making a difference in my life. And that's why I do that. Why I like the model? Well, there are many, many reasons. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, the PFP program addresses some of the fundamental challenges that we face as a country right now. Uh, we fa we, we're in a leadership crisis. Uh, a leadership, not only politically, but leadership in education. And we need a program like PFP to remind us that we need to be active citizens and that we need to build a nation. Ultimately, it's about nation building. We, we're building a new nation. I want to say that um, if we are going to bring positive change to the country, 
we cannot, and I agree with PFP's philosophy, we cannot ignore the 13 million learners at 25,000 schools all over. The point about that is that each one of those 25,000 points of delivery, at each one of those educational sites, there is a leader. And, and that is called the principal. And PFP is an initiative that aims to strengthen the leadership capacity of school principals, particularly in under-resourced schools. And I applaud that. And that's why I like this program. Just one or two more things. Uh, PFP is not just strengthening uh, principles, but PFP is also strengthening the fabric of South African society because it provides a structure for leaders from different backgrounds, from education and business, in different socioeconomic realities to come together and work in the community and, and make a difference. I like the fact that business leaders are challenged through the PFP to leave the comfort of the air-conditioned corporate offices and spend time in under-resourced communities. That's a real challenge. You need a lot of courage to do that. And they experience some of the harsh realities of this country, you experience it there. And so in communities all around South Africa, uh, these business leaders are helping to mobilize other citizens uh, to do the same. And so for, and, and, uh, I can go on, but I just want to say two more things. And one is we are moving to a post-COVID, hopefully, society. Long before COVID came, we were in trouble, not just as a country, but as a world. And part of the reason why we were in trouble is because we were driven by self-interest and avarice. And we worked only in silos. And so it became very difficult to attain some form of cooperation if we are driven by these things. And I want to say then when COVID-19 came, it laid bare some of the problems, some of the inequalities, and some of the challenges that we face. And although it did that, it also offers an opportunity. And that opportunity is for us to reimagine the world, the one that PFP is striving towards, where we can actually work together as active citizens around significant issues such as the educational crisis. I want to close with a, a quote that I, I wrote down and it's from a person called Anita Murjani. And for me, that's the underlying basis of the thinking in PFP. She says so beautifully and she's a, a cancer survivor born in Singapore. And she says, in the tapestry of life, we are all connected. Each one of us is a gift to those around us. Helping each other be who we are. Weaving a perfect picture together. That's Anita Mojani. And <clears throat> the PFP is, we we is weaving that picture. Thank you, Louise, for this. Wow. Thanks, Professor. And um, in the spirit of artifacts, I just want to let everybody, let everybody know that we are recording this so that we, I'm sure we all want to listen to what Professor Volming said just now again. So we will be record, we will be sharing the recording sometime. And I also want to invite you uh, to in the chat function, which is part of the artifact that we are co-creating, to share any thoughts, any responses. When you heard Professor Volming spoke, what kind of came up for you what because these these um your thoughts is part of our history and part of the story and we'd love to have that captured thank you so much professor volmink um i i remember that moment in durban so fondly and i i don't think i've ever felt so honored as to when you stood and i had no idea who you were i just had this this statesman stand up when i after i spoke and it it kind of gave us the energy to continue for a long time after that 
So the next person I'm going to ask to speak is um, Brunt Pretorius. Now, Linda Smith is on the call today. And Linda um, and I, in 2011, uh, Linda was on the board at the time, and we decided that we were going to start to get some, some serious business leaders with gravitas to support PFP. And we had no idea where to start, but somehow Brunt's name came up. No, neither of us knew Brunt at the time, but we decided we wanted to have a go. And we went and saw him in his beautiful office. He was still at McCarthy and we saw him at the beautiful office in Santon. And for us, he was a, Brunt was a kind of leadership exemplar. He was the kind of leader that we wanted to have involved in PFP. And, um, and since that day, from 2011, he's kind of been a self-appointed um, ambassador. He, he, has, he has been an amazing um, elder in my life. He has blessed me many days when I thought I didn't know how to continue. Brunt showed up and, and I could continue. I've been very jealous of Brunt's sons. Um, Jan Louis, who's one of the, on the call, has been one of the people I've been envious about, but I've claimed him as my... Like I've claimed Professor Volmink, I've claimed Jan as um, Brandt as, 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 as an adopted father. But uh, last year, about this time, uh, Brandt and I were at, at a meeting, and there was a business leader, quite a senior business leader, who's, who spoke about PFP, and she wasn't convinced, clearly wasn't convinced. And I remember thinking, oh, goodness, maybe, maybe I do, maybe I am smoking something. Maybe this thing isn't as impactful as I thought it is. And, um, but luckily, Brunt was in the meeting as well, and Brunt spoke up, and he said, no, let me tell you, I've just recently spoken to my son, Jan Louis, or I've been, I think Brunt said, you, you, I've been to Let's Tele, and I've seen the impact that this program has had in Let's Tele, and, and I left that meeting thinking, maybe I need to go and visit Let's Tele. And, um, and, and that's how this book came about, is, is a visit to Lester Tele, that became chapter two in the book and, and led to many other visits. But Brunt, um, I have two questions for you. And so the first question is, as you've been a very influential supporter of PFP since 2011, you gave, you gave us a beautiful endorsement. Uh, why do you support as a business leader and as a father of three very influential men, uh, why do you support the idea of bottom's possibility? And then also, I'm, I'm curious about that. Jan Louis and Brown Jr. have both been involved in PFP. And what have you seen? What have you seen as a result of their involvement? Uh, thank you, Louise. Uh, and uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Louise, may I firstly thank you for your kind words which I definitely do not deserve, but uh, do appreciate. And uh, let me say this, since 2011, since I've met you, I've been a great fan, a great admirer of yours because of your passion and your commitment. And PFP became your calling and you gave it everything you had. So I want to salute you. I want to thank you on behalf of the thousands of learners and educators who've been the beneficiaries of uh, PFP and your initiative and, and your hard work. So uh, thank you. You've, you are an inspiration uh, to many, including myself. So why do I support uh, PFP over and above what I've just said? Uh, I support PFP because of its relevance and also because of its uh, impact. If I can start with its relevance uh, first, it's an undisputed fact that the quality of education in South Africa needs to be improved dramatically. And school principals can play a major, major role in improving the quality of education. And school principals represent the focal point of the PFP program. 
the key objective of the program is to enhance the leadership uh, effectiveness and the managerial effectiveness of uh, school principals. And there's a second objective that uh, the PFP program has, and that is to improve the quality of leadership in the business sector. Why is that necessary? Because in the business sector, the autocratic command and control style of leadership is still very prevalent. And in a PFP environment, the business leader has to learn how to lead without the benefit of positional power and authority, because the business leader has to earn the trust and respect and the confidence of, uh, of his PFP partner. What has been the impact in this book uh, that we are launching today, there are numerous case studies providing compelling evidence that school principals who are part of the PFP initiative, they have developed into more inspirational leaders and more effective managers. And the, the benefit of uh, that involvement is clear. The benefits are tangible. One can see it, the quality of uh, financial administration tends to be better at PFP schools. Parents are more involved. Educators are more motivated. And in many, many cases, academic results uh, have improved. So there are very, very important benefits at school level in terms of the quality of education. But business leaders also benefit. In my experience, and that includes what I've observed when I spoke to my sons, business leaders who go through the PFP program emerge as transformed, authentic servant leaders who understand the realities of uh, South Africa, who understand that to lead is also to care and to lead is also to serve. So in my opinion, PFP represents one of the most outstanding examples of a shared value uh, CSI uh, program. Louise, to get to the second uh, question, uh, what have I observed uh, from uh, my sons, who uh, Brandt and Jan Louis, who've been part and parcel uh, of the PFP program? So I want them to do the talking and uh, this is what uh, my eldest son, Brandt, uh, had to say. So he said, participating in the PFP program fundamentally shifted my perspective from an intellectual appreciation to a real and deep understanding of the problems school principals and educators face on a daily basis. I respect them immensely for their courage and willingness to accept such an important but daunting challenge. PFP has left an indelible mark on me. I had to confront my privilege and prejudice. I saw real servant leadership in action and I was inspired by the quality of many of the leaders I met. PFP gave me the opportunity to provide and to receive hope. It is one of the most meaningful and enriching experiences I've had in my life. And then my son, Jan Louis, who's uh, listening to this, this is what uh, Jan Louis said. 
He said, working with my school principal, Juliet, has been an almighty wake-up call. It's been very humbling, to say the least. I used to consider myself enlightened, caring, and compassionate. But when I stepped out of my comfort zone into her world, I found myself facing a new reality. It was sometimes disheartening, but more often inspiring. Together we explored and discovered many opportunities for advancement. Juliet also demonstrated to me the true meaning of resilience. Being a school principal is not for sissies. PFP opened my eyes to the real world. My involvement represents an important step to becoming a better South African and a more authentic servant leader. So Louise, I'm uh, very proud of uh, both of them. And uh, I want to thank you again for the real, real difference uh, you're making in our country. Thank you. Oh, wow. Thank you, Brandt. Um, I'm sure many other people were as touched as I was in hearing Brandt speak. So please, if you've got any thoughts or responses uh, that are whirling through your head right now, please share them on the chat because it, it, they, we, will, we will be reading these notes later when we have a moment. Um, Jan-Louis is on the call. Um, we will be arranging a, a call. I think Jan-Louis will be speaking on the 4th of September. Um, or I'm not in I can't remember exactly, but we will be inviting everybody to a, a call specifically to hear from Jan Louis. Uh, I had the opportunity recently to be in a session with a Momentum Metropolitan Group where Brand spoke to that group around why he wanted, um, he thought they, they should all join PFP, and it was just phenomenal. I am going to ask Brand, uh, Brand, now that you've got these words from them. Could you please send me, <laughs> send me those, what you've just read, because we'd love to have that um, as part of our, just our, our, our overall story. And um, I know there are many people on our call who are now working very hard to see whether we can find more business leaders to join. So if they can have those kind of stories, that will definitely help them. So thank you, Brant, and thank you for making time to be with us today. The next person I want to introduce is um, Theo Garin. Now, Theo, um, Theo wrote most of the words in the book, I have to be honest about that. And then I added my little bits and, and we'll hear from Gail later. Gail um, polished it, but um, Wilhelm was on the call um, from, from uh, Knowledge Resources was very clear that he wanted the next book to have my name on it. And so that's why my, my name, is, is first on the list, but I have to acknowledge that Theo wrote most of the words. So Theo um, and I met when he was uh, working at the, at the Star, he was the editor of the Star Workplace. He was, he is a background, is that he was his principal before he became a journalist. He wrote, in, in, the, in the last 10 years, he wrote a few case studies about PFP partnerships. And every time he wrote a case study, uh, we as a team said, Theo gets this. He really understands what this is about. So when we were looking to some, for someone to help write the book, um, he was an, an obvious choice. So, so Theo, I'm interested. You and I spent many hours in cars driving to Letzitele and Nelspreit and the Natal North Coast and other places. Um, tell us about your experience of, of writing the book, of writing these words that were then edited and polished um, and what struck you about the stories that you heard as part of this group? Well I think you know I'd like to start at the beginning and that is you'll recall that when we first began this project we had a completely different idea. The idea was to was to make the case for the PFP way of doing things opposed to the other way in which both corporate educational aid programs were being run. We wanted to show that that a, a participative bottom-up type um, process was better than the top-down patriarchal um, coming in to fix a problem type of approach that, that, that existed 
in so many places. So I, in the beginning, went around and I studied those different kinds of projects and I met a lot of people. And I'll never forget, there was one man at a, at a big organization who said to me that, um, well, he said, PFP is a nice little program, but unless you can show me numbers, unless you can measure its effect, it's never going to have much of, a, of an impact. And I made the mistake of telling Louise that, and those of you who know her can just imagine what her response to that was. And that was something that was always in my mind later on when we changed, when we changed the way we were doing things. And on, that, on this journey, when, we would, when we, were, we would be sitting in the car driving back from another school in another township, and inevitably we'd be emotionally drained from the things that we'd seen and heard. But at the same time, we were uplifted and inspired by the people we'd met and the things that they were doing. And on more, more than one occasion, Louise, you would say to me, well, that's not bad for a nice little project, isn't it? And, and that was something that, that stuck in my mind as I, was, as I was writing these things down. I realized that that's what we needed to show. And so if I think of the stories that we heard and the stories we tried to tell, uh, the ones that will stick out for me were the, were, the, were the effects that the program had on individual people. So, so three examples. I, I, I remember the story of Jane in, in Attridgeville, who was late for the first PFP meeting that she went to because she couldn't find the venue. She'd hardly ever been out of Attridgeville in her life. And when we met her six years later, she'd been to the opening of Parliament as the, as the personal guest of, of Bob Head. Um, she'd been to a several overseas conferences. And in the process, at the same time, she had she'd grown so much uh, personally and her, her horizons had broadened. And her school, which was classified as an underperforming school when she started, was at that stage one of the top five schools in China. Then I think of the learner, Phil Kwan. He was a primary school boy in Cape Town. and We heard his story. He was blessed with the ability to run very, very fast but he didn't have any financial support. His family were very poor. And he was destined to become just another example of a talented young boy whose talent was just wasted because he never, was never given an opportunity. But he was also blessed to have a principal who cared about his pupils and who, and who was concerned that they should be able to achieve what they can achieve. And that principal was part of the program. And his business leader was uh, very resourceful, very, very energetic. And between the two of them, they managed to get the resources together to send for Kwan to the South African Primary School Athletics Championships last year, where he broke the South African record. And who knows, he may just be the next way Pretorius. But then the other story is, is of Tertia, uh, a principal in the Nelspratt ring. We visited her and her principal at, at a school in Cabo Queenie Township. Uh, Tertia had lost her mother and she was absolutely devastated about it. And her boss, who had also been part of the program, thought that if she puts Tertia on the program, it might just be what she needs to heal the hole in her heart, as she described it. And so we went and spoke to them and we met them. And while Tertia was telling us her, her story that day, she broke down. And I noticed the principal seamlessly hand her a box of tissues and then stand next to her with a, with a, with a hand on her shoulder while she dried her tears. And it occurred to me that that hadn't happened, that had happened many times before. It wasn't the first time it happened. So you asked about the, the impact of the stories on me. Those are three stories, a, a principal, a learner, a, a business leader. And they made me realize that, yeah, it's not bad for a small little project. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Theo. And again, we will continue these conversations because there's so many more stories like that. Um, Elsie, um, Tersha's principal is actually on the call. So Elsie, um, and, and uh, it was so devastating because uh, one of the stories that we capture in the book is about how Elsie has been um, getting the community to contribute to security gate and a security person at the school. And just a few week, months ago, that security guard was actually murdered. And when I send that note to you, uh, both of us ha had a bit of a heartbreak moment that, that day. Uh, but there's also hope in that. So thank you, Elsie. And we will also, Elsie, create an opportunity to hear you and Tasha, your and Tasha's story um, during this process. The next person I want to introduce is Gail McMillan. So Gail has been part of the team 
uh, for for many years. I think it's since 2015, Gail, you may, you may correct me on that. She has the most amazing gift with words and an ability to polish anything that I write is better after Gail has, has, gone, has polished it. So Gail, uh, we want to hear from you. What, what, tell us about your experience of editing the stories and, and what struck you about what you've read. Thank you, Louise. Good morning, everybody. Um, one of the main things that struck me when I was reading these stories was that many of them were about changed human beings. And um, I realized when I wanted to talk about this, and I can't say too much about that because it just makes me want to cry. But um, I think of people like um, we mentioned in the book, Prince, Principal Richard Sonkwala um, of Motherwell High in Port Elizabeth, who said, I was on the verge of giving up. Um, and he said, PFP saved my life and, and saved my career. And he's one of many principals who've, who've expressed sentiments like that. I, I know Anita's on the call today and her, her principal, um, Linda Lani Singer of Yo Yeovil Boys Primary said, I'm a completely different person after partnering with, with Anita and going through this program. I have got much more courage and I stand up for, my, for myself and for my teachers now better than I ever used to. But another thing that struck me really when I was going through this book was the huge variety of different types of impacts that the program has had and benefits that it's brought to schools over and above the capacity building of the school principals. And one of the examples that I, I didn't just read about but I've experienced by going to the school and meeting the principal and the learners on several occasions is, is the partnership at Clutisville High in Stellenbosch um, with a business partner there, Dion Mayberg, um, together with the principal, Dorian Mayer, has, has essentially transformed the safety and the security at that school. There were times when learners at that school were trying to learn with literally bricks flying through the windows. And, and as a result of the incredible proactivity of, of Dion, that school now has a state-of-the-art fence around, and those learners are safe. Um, Dion also organized for the entire staff team to have first aid training. He arranged for every teacher in that school to have a laptop that they can use. And, and almost best of all, in my view, is these incredible careers fairs that uh, Dion and his colleagues at, at MediClinic have arranged, where the learners at that school and other neighboring high schools have been exposed to scores of different careers, not just in the medical fraternity or uh, medical field, but careers in, in, in finance, in, in HR, in interior design, um, in actuarial sciences. And I've personally been to those fairs and seen the learners being so excited and having their eyes open. I remember talking to one young, young learner, a young lady who said to me, I'm going to be a lawyer. I've realized that I, that I need to become a lawyer. And, and this is just at, at that school, it's one example of incredible variety and value of benefits that have come into schools through the partnerships in these more than 1000 schools. Thank you so much, Gail. And again, I know you've got so much more to share. We wanted to keep the contributions crisp. But you've been an amazing contribution. And I have said to you a few times, this book would not have happened without you uh, participating and supporting us. And I'm hoping there's another book waiting for us somewhere along the line in, in honor of Professor Volmink, if nothing else. Um, so thank you, Gail. The next person I want to introduce, and I really do want to encourage people, thank you for those of you who have been contributing to the chat. It's just wonderful and uplifting and heartwarming to read your thoughts and responses. Um, and I know that Dion Mayberg is on the call and we will create a specific opportunity for you to hear from Dion and hopefully Dorian as well. Um, it must be heartwarming for Dion to hear how he has inspired Gail and all of us. Uh, it's also, the story is in chapter eight of the book, I think. Um, 
Next person I want to introduce is the co-founder of PFP, Ridwan Samudin. Now, none of this, none of any of these 1,300 stories, the books, any of that would have happened um, if Ridwan didn't say yes about exactly 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I had a dream and I wanted to try it. And I want this idea of business leaders working with principals. Went to Ridwan and he said yes. So Ridwan, um, you have now read uh, many of the stories. I don't know whether you've had a chance to read all of it. But we want to hear briefly from you, what, what struck you? What went through your head as you read um, these stories and, and, and realized that this wouldn't have happened without you? Is Ritwan with us? Partner? He's muted. There we go. He's muted. You, mean? you need to speak, my dear. You need to Respected yourself. elders, respected Walming, uh, Professor Walming, Professor Brian O'Connell, and Ma Helen. Greetings from Cape Town. If I may start off, I would like to start by saying that what struck me, the words of Greta Thunberg, the young activist speaking at the United Nations, says to the adults in the room, stop patronizing us with hope. We want your panic, and we want your panic to translate into action. And for me, the stories emanating from this book speaks of hope, but not only hope, but action. And so I read stories about caring citizens, embracing the diversity, and embarking on a journey of true nation building and striving for lasting reconciliation as we all try to carve a better future for our children. I read about the dinner king scenarios that flies off the pages, the theme of walking together, manifesting itself throughout this book. And I say bravo to all South Africans who have decided that that is the only way out for us to walk together. I celebrate the fact that throughout this book, we have embraced our African DNA of Ubuntu, which we have denied for so long. I am because of you and you are because of me. It takes a village to raise a child. And I see ordinary South Africans wanting to carve out a better future for our children. And the philosophy of Ubuntu, I want to symbolize with the circle of courage of the Red Indians when they speak about a sense of belonging, a sense of independence, a sense of mastery, and a sense of generosity. And throughout this book, those four themes manifest itself that people speak to the fact that they have restored or found the sense of belonging, that they have gained the sense of independence, that they've been given new skills, they have mastered those skills through the courses that we have done. And that once they have mastered that, they have become generous. Of the time, giving up the, themselves, it's extremely difficult, but this is what South Africans have done to give and to become generous because we all believe that the future of our children is in giving them a much better quality education. So I believe that what this book speaks to is the words of our former late president, Nelson Mandela, when he says that there can be no greater measure of a society well-being. There can be no greater measure of society's well-being but by the way they treat each other. And I think the call is on all of us to do all we can to carve out a better future for all of our children. And so I want to congratulate each and everyone for the contributions. Well done to all the South African heroes who have given the time, who have made a commitment and a deep passionate desire to create a more equitable peaceful and just South Africa. And we can only do that if we give our children a better chance. And so with that, that is what speaks to me and speaks to my heart. And from my heart, I say thank you to everybody for your contributions. So my goodness, I have to say to all of you that 10 years ago, he wouldn't open his mouth. Now he's become the orator of note. Anybody needs a, a, a public speaker or a keynote speaker? Uh, he's your man. Thank you, Ridwan. It's always such a privilege to hear you speak and to see how you have just discovered your voice in the most beautiful way. So thank, thank you, you so much. 
Rizwan's birthday on Friday, so we're also Saturday. So we're celebrating 62 years of his contribution. The last person I want to, con to introduce formally, and then we are going to hopefully hear from a few more people, and also just another reminder that we'd love to hear your thoughts on the chat, is Wilhelm Krauss, who is he's the, um, the CEO of, of Knowledge Resources, and they are the publishers of this book. The second, they've also published this, the first book. Um, Wilhelm, I had no doubt that when I sent you that email uh, that you would say yes to, so this Partners Possibility is a story of people saying yes. But you said yes for the second book and the first book. And we'd love to hear just from you why, why, why do you think these books need to be published? And why did Knowledge Resources want to get involved? Yeah. Just before I go, before I talk to you, um, I also just want to acknowledge that Sia Yubar in Wilhelm's team has done most of the work behind the scenes. So, um, Huge appreciation for Sia, but then but Hallam is the boss, so he gets the opportunity to speak. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Louise. Thank you, and uh, hi to everybody else. Um, for those who really don't know us, we publish, amongst others, books mainly in the business and the management environment. So, uh, look, we, I'm, I'm deeply aware that the nation's future is built on education. And unless uh, South Africa does um, focus that as the number one priority, we can forget about really um, solving the problems that we have here in the country. So for, for, that's mainly the, that was mainly the reason why um, we, we decided to publish the first, uh, um, the first book. I know, um, Louise, from, from and, and you know, I know you, Louise, from some time back before the first book, and I know the passion that you have about education and we, we we just had to support this because these are the most magnificent stories and it has a wider effect on society in addition to just the education system it develops leaders so um and and in, in actual fact can change our country so um the same applied when louise came to us with a second book um we again said yes we will definitely support this um it can enhance uh, education further. We need to share these stories and so on. So, so firstly, my first point is we, we as an organization believe in what you are doing. We, we believe in PFP and the uh, uh, magnificent contribution that, um, that it does. Um, the second uh, reason, there's a second reason that's mainly more a tongue in cheek. Uh, knowing Louise, most of you, you can't say no to her. So, um, <laughs> There's no, you don't have enough energy to fight the fighter or to, to oppose her. So in actual fact, we, uh, this time we just jumped at the, at the opportunity to publish it again. So um, if I can just add, um, apart from that, to what Brandt said earlier this morning and to many others, I think, we, uh, Louise, we really need to salute you. Um, in listening to everybody else, I thought, why didn't the government just take a billion of this COVID money and give it to you and partners for possibility and you will solve the education system once and for all. Um, a nation that doesn't make human capital, it's number one priority and the development of human capital and including um, obviously health there um, cannot really uh, achieve growth rates that um, that we're talking about we need in this country. So Louise, once again, thank you very much for, uh, for the opportunity. It was, it's really a pleasure and an honor to be part of this uh, project. And to, to you, um, ju just keep your energy and to continue and fight the good fight. Thank you so much, Wilhelm. So thank you everybody for your beautiful listening. Um, I have to just say that as Wilhelm was speaking about the COVID money, Edward Kiswetter showed up on my screen. And as you all know, Edward Kiswetter is the big boss at SARS now. So he gets to, I'm hoping, uh, suggest some suggestions with regard to this money that comes into the SARS coffers. Uh, Edward, that's not to put you on the spot. That's just because we have to do something. Um, so we have a few minutes. We have about six minutes if, for other people who want to say something and really want to just invite you to unmute your, your, um, thing, your, Unmute and I will then uh, let you know that you want to say something and we'd love to hear from you. And we've got such beautiful voices on this, on this call. 
Edward, Prof, Brian, Figaji, many others. Edward, I see you are on So, yes, thank you. Uh, um, you know, we talk about uh, a very important challenge in our country, which is serious. So I'm going to be lighthearted about, sound lighthearted about it for a moment. And it's um, gender-based violence. I must tell you, Louise is guilty of gender-based violence on me. Uh, she has bullied me into working with Spartans for Possibility <laughs> ever since I first met her. So I am sufficiently bullied by, by Louise. Why, why did I allow myself uh, to be continually bullied? Is because I have, uh, first of all, I'm a sucker for success stories. And PFP is a huge success story. It's a huge South African success story. Um, and we need many more success stories in South Africa. Personally, I understand the value of a good principle. I was privileged to have a Matt Ardendorf in my life as a young child at W.D. Hendricks in the, what many of you may not know, it was called the Kreef Hut. It's the back end of a township in Cape Town called Factoryton. Matt Ardendorf was the principal there, and I had the privilege of him. And then I had the privilege of a Victor Ritchie at Harold Cressy. So I know how transformative an impact a principal can have in the life of a child, because I am such a product. Um, Louise will know that at important moments in my life, I have invited and included Victor Ritchie uh, because of the acknowledgement of that impact. You know, Many ideas, uh, many great ideas, never see the light of day. And a multitude of those who even see the light of day succumb to infant mortality as a result of significant challenges and startup uh, risks that startups face. For a good idea to outgrow, outlast such risks of early um, demise, it needs to meet a few must-win battles. The first is it must seek to solve a real problem. And Partners for Possibility solved a real and problem that was crying for help, a problem that was created more than 300 years ago um, and we still have not successfully solved it. The second must win is it must have the potential to have a transformative impact on society uh, and partners for possibility is a transformative um, intervention. And thirdly, it must have a focused, passionate and resilient leader with fanatical discipline, to borrow the words of um, Jim Collins. And Louise was such a leader. She was a leader for the moment. And I think that's why we are able to celebrate the success, because it met those three very important criteria. So congratulations uh, to you, Louise, and well done. Uh, and keep up the good fight. You have many supporters. Thank you. Thank you very much, Edward. Whoa. Um, I do want to say to you that the book is available on Kindle for those of you who read on Kindle. And uh, for the rest, uh, you can just order it from us, 340 Rand. We will deliver it to where you are working from home. Uh, the feedback that we're getting is that people are really enjoying the stories. It's, it is hope. These are stories are hope giving stories. Professor Figaji. Um, before we end, uh, could we hear just maybe one word from you and then I'm going to give Brant Pretorius the final last word for the day. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Louise. I, I was not going to say anything, but let me, let me do. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm fast. Thank you for the invitation, first of all, and, and um, I'm very impressed with the, with the people on the call um, and people who have taken time to join the call. Uh, I, you know, the recognized role that, that PFP plays is, is normally the educational role. 
and we all see that and we see the results and we see the schools. Um, and, and my comment to you was around the less recognized role, and that is the bridging of our society and the healing of the wounds of apartheid. And so you have Black Lives Matter, you now have the sports people fighting about it with each other. And that's all because we don't have a mechanism for people to understand the effects of the historic past. And you only understand that when you actually see it. And what PFP does is it gives white people an opportunity to see the disadvantage and then start realizing what the consequences are. When I listened to Brunt this morning, that speak can only come from somebody who has lived, seen, lived, realized, and now understands exactly what the impact of our history is. And sport was supposed to heal our wounds. Well, they haven't really. And I think what we must realize at PFP is we have a vehicle that actually helps people in society to learn to understand, without fanfare, learn to understand each other, learn to understand the historic past, see what that is, and in their way, provide reparation. That's what it is doing. And it's a, it's a vehicle that we must use more readily, more widely, not only to improve education, but to build society and to repair the South African society. And it gives us all an opportunity to talk to each other with empathy and understanding. And I think for me, that's the role. That's the important part that PFP is coming to play. So thanks and good luck to all of you. Thank you, Brian. Um, one of our partners who were, wasn't able to be with us today um, in NetBank has been arguing very vociferously that we need to have all white leaders in South Africa need to do a program like PFP, it might not be PFP, but um, because it's only when you, when you get involved yourself that you realize how privileged you've been your whole life. And I think all of the white people on this call will be able to respond to that, will we'll acknowledge that. Um, we're going to end because we want to end on time. Uh, obviously, everybody's invited to, to share their thoughts. Um, but final word to Brant Pretorius, if you're willing to, Brant. Uh, thank you, Louise. Uh, I'm not accustomed to have uh, the last word. Uh, never, ever has it happened before in a conversation with you. But uh, <laughs> I just want to congratulate you and your team again on the publication of this second book. I wish you well with it. I want to wish uh, Kumala Pele well with her new assignment. And then uh, to close off, uh, the Partners for Possibility story is a uniquely South African story. A PFP is a story of uh, courage, of uh, caring, of commitment. It's a story of uh, hope. It's about things that, uh, that move the human spirit. PFP is about uh, giving and learning and sharing and discovering for the good of all. But the work of PFP is not uh, done yet. Uh, there are thousands of uh, dysfunctional schools out there. So I want to close off, Louise, on your behalf. This is a call to action. There's a powerful Chinese proverb, and it says, Better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. So I want to appeal to all the PFP supporters, everybody who's a PFP stakeholder, to 
join hands with Louise and Kumala and the team and to go out there and to go and light many, many, many candles at many, many more schools. Uh, thank you, Louise, for this opportunity. Thank you, Brent, and thank you, everybody, for showing up today. If you are willing to just share your final thoughts in the chat, that we can take that with us, we would love that. Um, and have a wonderful rest of your day and week, and, and good luck with everything that you're doing, and let's keep our eyes on what's possible rather than what's getting us so down at the moment. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. Thanks, Louise. Thank you, Louise. God bless. Thank you, Baba Do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, much. Thank you for being part of this. Thank you, Louise. Good luck. Bye. Thank you, Louise. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Thank you very much and bye. <laughs> Thank you, Louise. Thank you. Bye bye. So, I think there's a surprise. Louise. Louise. Bye -bye. Louise. Wow. Need a longer call, Louise. Oh, definitely. We will be doing more calls like these. Thank you, Louise. Bye. Thank you, Louise. Okay, so then let's say. Thank you, Louise. Bye. I met my Magira today. Not, not Thank you so much. We appreciate it every moment, Louise. Keep it up. Yes, I know. Thank you. We'll do more. We'll have more. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Louise, this is Hanor here. Um, yes, can we get a recording of this event? Yes, it has been uh, recorded and I will uh, send it out to everybody. Just give me a link to this. I can then, well done. Thank, thanks a lot. Have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye.